Thank you so much, Endel, for sponsoring this video. Three weeks ago, I started using the app Endel on my iPhone. As an ASM artist, I know that sound is a powerful tool in either stimulating or relaxing the mind and the body. Endel really captures this power by creating real-time personalized soundscapes. In my experience, I've been using Endel to help improve my sleep schedule and my circadian rhythm. I would turn on the Endel sleep soundscape and set an alarm for 8 a.m. The soothing ocean waves and chimes prime my mind to switch to sleep and I end up dozing off around 11 p.m. I find that I wake up less frequently throughout the night and if I do wake up, I'll fall right back asleep. In five minutes before 8 a.m., Endel switches to brighter and more cheerful tones to wake me up gently and feeling refreshed instead of groggy as I have in the past. After I wake up, Endel will suggest either self-care, meditation, or yoga to start the day. This is a habit I've been trying to implement for years with no luck. Endel truly makes it so easy. Before I began using the Endel app, I was going to sleep quite late, around 12 to 3 a.m. and waking up between 9 to 11 a.m. Resetting my circadian rhythm to be more in tune with the sun has greatly improved my mood and energy levels. I prefer to choose my soundscapes as I go about my morning, but you can also save these routines so that they are repeated the following day or choose autoplay where Endel uses AI technology to adapt in real time to personal inputs like location, weather, and heart rate. The first 100 people to download Endel by clicking the link below will get one free week of audio experiences. Hi there, Marika. Welcome back. Thank you. What brings you in today? I woke up this morning with mm -hmm. blurry vision in my oh, right no. eye. Mm. And I'm not too sure what's caused it, so I thought I'd book an appointment to see what's up. Yeah, I'm so glad you came in. That sounds really alarming. Has this ever happened to you before? No, this would be the first time. Mm -hmm. And I've been told by my doctor that I have 20-20 vision. So when I woke mm. up and I couldn't see, yeah. I was quite shocked and surprised. Yeah, for sure. And that happened this morning? This morning. As soon as you woke up? As soon as I woke up. Okay. Okay. And um, did you have any eye problems or vision problems before? The blurriness started today. It is painful, mm. especially when I move my eye right to left i do feel a lot of pain mm. and actually thinking about it two days ago it started i didn't think of i didn't think it was a big deal mm. so i just took some time and all mm. but now that i'm thinking it, it could be related i'm not sure can you tell me more about that pain is it also in the right eye just in the right eye the back eye the mm. back of my eye like behind the eye behind the eye okay yeah. it really hurts now how how much does it hurt from one to ten one being very little pain ten being the most pain you've ever experienced i'd say about a five five out of ten mm -hmm. okay and how would you describe the sensation is it dull is it sharp shooting how would you describe it i'd say it's a bit dull dull and achy at the back. It's like a dull ache, okay. Mm -hmm. Right. And it and it's worse when you move your eye right to left. Right okay. to worse with eye movement. Alright. Have you ever experienced this eye pain before this time? Not at all, which is why it's so concerning to me. Hmm. For sure. And you are 24 years old, yes? This is your first time having any kind of vision issues. You said that your eyes were 20-20 beforehand. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, we'll definitely look into everything. We'll do a thorough checkup of your eyes. I'm also gonna check your vitals and your lymph nodes, and we're probably also gonna run some blood tests later and probably do some scans as well. Okay. Okay? All right, thank you. Um, I have a few more questions before we move on to that. Do you have any medical history? Now, I'm looking at your medical history here. Let me know if I'm missing anything. It doesn't look like you have any kind of health conditions. Is that correct? That's correct. Okay, so no diabetes. Okay, no glaucoma. Mm -mm. Is there any glaucoma in your family? No. Any diabetes in your family? No. Okay. What about multiple sclerosis? It's an autoimmune condition. Not in my family, no. Okay. Um, all right. Any for any cancers in your family? No. Okay. Are you taking any medication currently? Mm, yes. Yes, I am. I'm taking naproxen for mm -hmm. my menstrual migraines. Mm -hmm. And how often do you take that? Once a month. Mm -hmm. If it's a bad cycle, to, uh, two times. Mm. And if it's an okay cycle, just once. Okay, I hear you. All right, and um, are you taking any, are you drinking any alcohol at all? Not at all. No alcohol, any recreational drugs? No. Okay. Any tobacco, any smoking? No. No smoking, okay. Okay. All right, have you had any infections? For example, have you had Lyme disease or exposure to Lyme? Any ticks at all? The area that my farm's located on, we do have ticks. Mm -hmm. So I would consider myself higher risk than normal mm. people for, for ticks. Okay. I check myself every day and so far nothing. And I have two puppies who love to roam around in the wild. Yeah. I check them too and nothing. Okay. Like no tip, no ticks on the puppies at all. Sometimes there are ticks, but um, when I take them off right away, it it's fine. I, okay, yeah. that's good. Okay, so you take off the ticks right away with the puppies, so no issues of transmission. Um, I mean, no issues of ticks attaching to you, right? I'm very careful. I, I do wear gloves, so I'm okay. I'm very careful. Okay, great, awesome. But you did say you are at a place where there's high tick exposure, so that's something we have to keep in mind. Okay. Um, any other infections? Have you had any viral infections lately, like colds and flus, anything like that? No. Okay. Okay. All right. Let's go ahead and start your exam. I want to get this done as soon as we can so we can determine what is going on with your eye. Okay, thank you. Have you had any fever recently? No. Okay, good. Okay. I'll have you put this under your tongue, okay? Close your mouth and just hold it with this arm right here. Okay, and I'm just gonna take your pulse, all right?
and please have your arm. estimation and then we'll do the actual reading okay oops Can you please raise your hand all the way up and just pump your fist 10 times, okay? We're just going to get the blood circulating again. Okay. I'm just going to raise your arm right up there to heart level. Blood pressure is perfectly norm normal, 113 over 75. Just take that off. Thank you. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and look at your eyes. I'll start with your left eye here. Just look straight ahead right there. Mm -hmm. I'm going to see if there's any inflammation of the conjunctiva, which there doesn't seem to be. Mm -hmm. No extra discharge. No swelling of the, the tear duct or the glands, the lacrimal glands. a closer look with a light. I want you to just keep looking straight ahead, all right? Let's see if there's any cataracts on the cornea or any tears, nothing. Any shadows on the iris? Nope. Hmm. Yeah, no issues that I can see right here. No signs of hemorrhaging. Okay, any pain when I was touching your eye there, mm -hmm. on your eyelid? Okay. Let's take a look at the problem eye, the right eye. Okay, let me just start with looking at your conjunctiva again. Nope, no discharge. No discharge. Excess discharge, no redness. Any pain when I close your eye? Any pain at all when I do this? No, only when I move it. Okay, open up. I'm just gonna feel no swelling of the lacrimal gland or the ducts. Okay. Let me take a closer look at your cornea to see if there is any tears or No issues with the iris or lens either. Let me check your pupillary reflex. So I want to just obstruct 
any light from going across right now. Let's look at the reflex here. The reflex there. Okay, I'm going to look out on the other side. Okay, and on this side. Okay, I'm going to do it one more time, alright? I just want to double check my findings. I'm going to actually look from this side. seem to be an issue with your right eye. It looks like when I am projecting light directly into that eye, it's not, um, constri it is constricting, but it's not, the pupil is not constricting as much as the other eye is. So there's a little asymmetry there. So I'm just going to write down my findings, okay? Okay. Is a relative affluent pupillary defect. Okay. okay. Let's keep going and see what we find. I'm going to do an age test. For this test, you're just going to follow the light okay, and follow it just with your eyes. Don't move your head. Okay. I'm also going to be asking you about pain levels during this test. Okay. So just follow the light, all right? Good. Follow the light. Good. Is it painful when you're moving your eye there? Just the right eye. And how much pain would you say? I'd say about a five. Five out of ten. Okay. I'm just going to do it one more time just to double check my findings there. Just keep following the light, okay? Okay. Sorry about the pain that it's causing. Okay. So, good news is you don't have any issues with your extraocular muscles. Those are the muscles that are controlling the eye movements. So I don't suspect any issues with those nerves. Okay. Ooh. That's good. Just a curiosity, how is Jackson doing? Oh yeah, Jackson. He doesn't work for me anymore. He long story short, he's not he wasn't doing the best job, so I did have to let him go. Sorry about that. It's fine. Now the receptionist is great, so we're probably not gonna see any more issues regarding that. That's good. Alright, so let us continue with a few more tests. I'm going to check your corneal light reflex, all right? Just look straight ahead of that same corner there. Okay, no issues with that. Okay, I want you to look right there. The light's not on right now, but I want you to look straight there. And then back at that corner. And then corner. Okay, and then you just keep looking. Good. Okay. Okay, so corneal light reflex, present and symmetrical, and near accommodation, present. All right. All right. So this is what we call a Snellen chart, and we're going to test your vision right now, right? Okay. I want to start with your left eye, so please cover your right eye for me. Okay. Making sure that you're covering it completely. Okay, great. So go ahead and read the lowest line for me, all right? Card is held in good light. 14 in... <laughs> that one? No, oh, that's great. But oh. can you please read the numbers? Right oh, oh, sorry. Right, okay. Um, four, two, six, two, five, nine. Okay, perfect. 
All right, so it looks like your left eye does have 20-20 vision. Now let's switch to your right eye, all right? Okay. So now please cover your left eye. We're gonna test your right eye, okay? okay. Make sure that's completely covered. Mm -hmm. Why don't you start with the third line from the top? Um, a seven, two, I, I can't, it's difficult. Okay, what about the one above that? Eight, seven, four. Okay, and the one above that, you can see that pretty clearly? Nine, five, yeah. Okay, so 2400 vision. 20 over 400, which of course is a lot lower than you're used to. Okay, let's keep testing. <laughs> Um, I'm going to cover this eye. I want you to look straight ahead again. I'm going to cover that eye. Okay. One more time. Okay. And one more time. Okay. All right. Most of business. Okay, so now we're going to do what's called an Amsler grid test. So I want you to stare at, I want you to first, let's start with your left eye, okay? Cover your right eye for me. I want you to stare at the center right there, okay? Do you see it? Yep. Focus on that center. Can you see the four edges? One, two, three, four. Can you see that? Yep. Great. Now, can you see the center dot? Yes. Can you stare at the dot in the center? Okay. Now, can you see the four edges while still staring at the dot in the center? Yes. Good. Are any of the lines blurry or wavy? Not at all. Okay, great. Let's switch to the other eye now. Stare at the center for me. Can you see that dot in the middle? Um, no. Can you see the four edges? Yes, on the left side. What about the right side? No. Okay, <laughs> any wavy lines or blurry lines on the left side? No. Okay. Okay. Right. All right, so now let's do some visual fields tests. Um, I'm going to check your peripheral visual fields. So we're going to start again with your left eye, okay? So your left eye is here. I'm also going to be covering this eye. So cover your right eye for me. Okay, and I want you to stare at my eye right here, okay? Now I'm going to be wiggling my fingers. As soon as you see the wiggling tips of my fingers, I want you to let me know, okay? see it? Okay. I see it? Okay. I see it? Good. I see it? Okay. I see it? I see it? Okay. All right. So now let's switch to the other eye. Okay, now stare at my eye here. I'm gonna start over here. I hear something, but I don't see it. I don't see anything. Okay, what about this eye? Keep staring at my eye. Oh, I see something. Yeah, I see it. Okay. I see it. I see it. Okay. Okay, so here's another test. I'm going to do visual fields again, but you're going to tell me if you see one or two, okay? One or two. Okay. Start again with your left eye. All right, cover that eye for me and just stare at that this eye right here. Okay. One. Two. One. Two. 
two, one, one, two, one, two, one, one. Great. Okay, let's switch eyes. One, two, okay, two, uh, hear a noise, one, two, okay, all right, just lay that down. So I want to do a fundoscopy, but beforehand, I want to check your lymph nodes. I know you said there were no, there was no fever. I didn't notice any fever, but let's see if you have any swollen lymph nodes, okay? Okay. So I want to go ahead and check your lymph nodes. So you can just relax. Now just check. I want you to shrug your shoulders, please. Just shrug them up, please. Thank you. Okay, bring them back down. Good. Check back here as well. Okay. Just the deeper lift nodes now. That's okay. Just check the pectoral lymph node here. There. There. Don't worry, okay. Oh, what happened right there? Oh, that's an embarrassing story. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I have six feral cats that mm -hmm. came with the farmhouse, and yeah. I've been feeding them every day. Okay, nice. And I feed them from my hand, mm. and a week ago, one bit me. It wasn't mm. an, an aggressive bite, just I think my, the kitten thought my finger was food and bit me, and it was actually pretty deep. Mm. Um, so I just put a bandaid on it and s stopped the bleeding. Did you wash it at all? Put any polysporin on top? No, I just rinsed it with water and put a band-aid on. Okay. It was bleeding a bit, but it doesn't seem to bother me now. It's not oh. swollen or anything. It doesn't seem to be swollen at all now? Nope. Would it be okay if I took a look? Sure. Okay. Where did you say they... Right here. Okay. Yeah, it doesn't look like there's any swelling, any streaks. Should I be concerned? Well, cats are quite notorious for causing infections with their bites and their scratches, oh. or even if they're licking an open wound. Hmm. Especially kittens, they have this bacteria called Bartonella hensley, which hmm. causes cat scratch disease, cat scratch disease or cat scratch fever. And um, I'm, I am concerned that maybe that might have happened, especially since you didn't put on any topical antibiotics or go to the hospital for this. It was so small, I didn't think it was important to go to the hospital, but thanks for letting me know. It's really important to get checked right away. 
cats, their teeth are kind of like needles. Oh. They can puncture pretty deep puncture wounds and the tip of their teeth can actually inject a bacteria directly into it, into your bloodstream. So I definitely am concerned about that, but it's good that there hasn't been any swelling or anything. Okay. You haven't had any fevers. No. Okay. Let me check your other lymph nodes. Okay. Okay, let's take a look here. Okay. Did you notice any swollen lymph nodes over the past week ever since you got that uh, bite from the cat? No, not at all. Have you been paying attention at all? When it bit me, I definitely knew it drew blood. It wouldn't stop bleeding for a couple of minutes. So mm -hmm. I ran out of cold water and I put a bandit on it and I didn't think too much of it after it stopped bleeding. Okay. All right. Well, why don't we go ahead and do your fundoscopy. I'm going to take a look at the back of your eye and then we'll go from there. Okay. Do you think this kitten bite is related? Possibly, there is a chance that the cat bite and its bacteria, the Bartonella I was talking to you about, it can, in very rare circumstances, cause what's called neuroretinitis, the inflammation of the retina. Oh. That's why I want to like take a look at the back of your eye and see if there's any issues back there. Okay. Thank you. Yes. All right, let's take a look at your right eye. I want you to look straight ahead at that corner again. Okay. Perfect. Let's see here. Mm, prefer to use that one there. And then I'm just going to... Oh, that's too much. That's, that's probably the best one there. And I'm going to come pretty close. I hope that's okay. Mm hmm. Hmm. Okay. Just taking a look at your optic disc now. How are you feeling? Okay. okay. All right. I'm gonna have to take a look at it again. Just gonna give your give that eye a bit of a break. Let's go over to the right side. Um. Let's go over to the left side. Okay. So just keep looking straight ahead. Okay. Let's take a look here. Okay. I'm just gonna check the. the best one there. They're gonna come pretty close again. doing okay all right let's switch back to your right eye for uh, one more time okay Now I want you to look directly into the light source for just a few seconds, okay? Okay. okay. All right. Okay. Um, I do have some concerns with your eyes. When I was looking at the back of your eye, the retina, 
um, on your right eye, it does look like you have a macular star. So normally it should just look like a little um, circle there and it looks like a star shape, which to me suggests that the cat scratch disease could be responsible for your blurry eye. We don't know, this is my prediction right now. We're gonna run a few more tests, some blood tests to see if we can find that bacterium. Oh. And um, yeah, it can get pretty serious, but the good thing is we do have um, a cure for this. We can prescribe antibiotics and uh, kill that bacterium and hopefully your eye will go back to normal. Okay. okay. I also noticed that your optic disc, which is basically your optic nerve, is swollen. So there is inflammation back there. Okay. So let me also take a look at your left eye as well. I want to look at the macula and see if there's any stars there too. Okay. Okay, one last time. Okay. to look directly at my light source for a few seconds. Okay, good. All right, the good news is there is no macular star on this side. However, there's also a swollen um, optic disc. So it looks like the bacterium is affecting both eyes in terms of causing inflammation of your optic nerve and also your retina. So I'm going to go ahead and order a blood test to check for that for any kind of bacteria in your blood. And we're also going to do an optical coherence tomography scan to see, to get some more information. Okay. And any others, any other tests that I believe we should get, and we're going to get those right away done for you so that we can get you right back in tomorrow and um, we can prescribe some antibiotics or whatever else that you might need. Okay. Okay. Thank you. I know this is concerning and worrisome, but I promise you we are going to do our very best to correct your condition. Thank you so much. Okay. Take care now. Thank See you, you soon. Bye.